Howdy guys, Rex here. We had a lot of requests to do this particular comparative analysis between these two optics. Uh, this one is gonna be more uh, facts-based, just we're gonna give you the data, the actual test results, because I've already tested both these optics. I haven't released a v, uh, review on the Arkin EP5 yet. I'm still getting some more cool footage for the actual review, but I can share with you the test results. We got this one posted uh, kind of recently, the Vortex Venom. And um, I haven't shared all the comparative data points between these two models. People are curious because they're in the same price range. They have a very similar configuration. They're both five to 25 rifle scopes with 56 millimeter objective lenses. They both have mill configured turrets, the windage and elevation, and they both have a zero stop system. They're both first focal plane reticles. So being that they're very, very similar, uh, folks wanted to do a more detailed comparative analysis so they can determine which one might be best suited for them. This video is gonna be facts, not feelings. I'm just gonna give you the raw results, okay, of, of all the different tests. Uh, we're gonna do a, a quantitative analysis on the tracking precision and reliability of how both these models went. We got a lot of that done. That usually takes me quite a bit of time to really plot out. Um, there's a lot of details you have to explore to see how they both work. Also, I got more of a, a quantitative resolution of the optical systems for both of these, where we can look and see in terms of numbers, which one did better in which lighting conditions and other anomalies. So I'm just going to share with you the test results. Um, bar none. I got this one just as full disclosure for scientific process. I got this one from Optics Planet, okay, to review. I got this one from Arkin's or uh, Arkin Optics USA to review. So I got both these scopes in to review. Um, I do have actual codes if you're interested in either one of these. I'll give you the one below here for uh, Optics Planet, and it's for all the stuff you can get from Optics Planet if you want this model that they carry that. I don't believe they carry that, so I have the uh, discount codes for Arkin as well. Full disclosure, so you guys know where I'm coming from, okay? All right, so right off the bat, we have Vortex and we have Arkin, okay? That's the scope brand, that's who branded it. The model, this is the Venom, five to 25 by 56. This is the EP5, five to 25 by 56, first focal plane MRAD, okay? If you're looking for the exact model. And the details will be in the description below. Origin of manufacture on both is China, okay? There it says made in China. And right here, it's covered up by this mount. It is made in China, if you're wondering, okay? So they're both made there. They're not made, I do not believe, in the same uh, plant in China, though. They're quite a bit different. The retail price point of both of these they're in the same general category, which is what I would call semi-affordable long-range precision rifle scopes. That price range of around $500. The Vortex uh, Venom's MSRP is $699.99. I got this uh, uh, from Optics Planet, who is offering it now for, I think, $499.99. So the price point would probably average out to be around $600 if you average it out. The EP5 is $549.99 on their website. And I don't know what they're going for in retail stores. So they're very close in price. This one's a, a little bit cheaper, okay? Um, they come with a variety of different things. Uh, right on the table, you can see here the Vortex. Uh, just getting that from Optics Planet. You got the scope lens bra cover deal. You got a lens wipe. You got a little Allen wrench, which is for attaching this throw lever. You actually actually get the throw lever as well that's mounted. We have the zero stop system, which we'll get into in a minute. We have a key for the turret caps. We have instructions, okay? The Arkin comes in and a sunshade as well. The Arkin comes with the sunshade. And if you get the upgrade option, it doesn't cost anything more. I'll leave the links below. You get the rigid mount or a choice of these rings or this mount. I just, I was using these rings actually for the scope as well. Um, but we have the rigid mount. You can get that with the optic for the same price, 549, you use their codes. Uh, we have the rubber lens caps that come with that as well. Uh, we have the tool for the rigid mount, the Torx wrench. We have a little bag. We have lens cap battery, another tool that adjusts, I believe here, that's a three millimeter hex head wrench to adjust your turret adjustments and your zero stop. We have the bubble level 
which I have one mounted on here now. We have the throw lever that comes in here. There's the packaging, okay? We have the throw lever mounted on here as well. Um, instruction manual. You got some uh, stickers and memorabilia or whatever and a bra deal, okay? And so that's what they both come with. That's the, the, the stuff that comes with the optic if you're looking for the swag and all the additional accessories. The main tube diameter on both of them is 34 millimeters. The minimum magnification on both of them is five power. Maximum magnification on both of them is 25 power. They both have 56 millimeter objective lenses. The Vortex Venom has what they call the XD lens elements. So the glass in this is what they call XD lenses, okay? The Arkin has what they call the ED Japanese glass. So it's extreme dispersion is what that means. I'm not sure, I think XD might be kind of a similar idea to that. Everyone brands stuff differently or has different names they put on it. Uh, we'll get into the test results on that in a minute. The uh, field of view on the Vortex here is 21.2 feet at 100 yards on its low power. 4.7 feet at 100 yards on its high power. The Arkins field of view, 25.3 feet at its low power and 4.9 feet. So I think that's about an 18% uh, difference. Arkin has a little bit bigger of a field of view. The objective lens on both of these optics is threaded for the use of a sunshade. I have not dug into the details yet on if uh, what ARD uh, anti-reflection devices would fit if there are ones available for both of these. They do have different size um, threads on them. The threads on the Vortex, you have about two or three threads to engage it, and it's a, a shorter it's a shorter throw to screw it in there. The Arkin has three or four threads, has a little bit longer of a tenon area for it to thread into. They're both three inches in length once installed, the sunshades. Both sun shades are relatively shiny on the inside. They have a glossy finish, uh, which can add to reflection. So very similar there. Uh, they're a little bit different size. They're not interchangeable. The diopter adjustments on this side, we're gonna start back here. There's no markings on the vortex, save this dot. It does adjust backwards uh, 0.375 inches of movement when you unscrew it. The Arkin is marked with a plus, a zero, and a minus mark, as you can see here and it has a half inch of movement when you adjust the diopter. So it has a little more movement than this. The Arkin has a little bit driver feel on the diopter. The Vortex is a little more lubricated or smooth feel, even though it has a little bit less adjustment. They both pass the extreme cold weather check. They're both a go. That's hard to quantify that. That's basically pass or fail, so it's a go or no go. They both were a go on the extreme cold weather check. The ocular lens caps are available for both these models. Obviously, Arkin does come with the rubberized lens cap, which you can see here is quite rubbery. The front is harder plastic, spring-loaded. Seems like it's actually pretty decent quality. Um, for this one, I, I would imagine you could get a variety of different lens caps by different manufacturers if you so choose to get them. Parallax adjustment knobs on both of these scopes is on the left side of the control group. The Vortex has a smooth but heavy kind of turn to it. It has a soft stop on the low end of the parallax, so it's a little mushy on the low end, and when you go to the high side, it's a nice, hard, crisp stop. The Arkin adjusts nice and smooth as well. It does have some additional graphics there that show you which direction you're turning the knob. It has a hard stop on the top and on the bottom end. The parallax adjustment range on the Vortex Venom is 15 yards to infinity. The Arkin adjustment range is 25 to infinity, and it's not specified whether it's yards or meters. The Vortex comes with a reticle called the EBR7 Charlie, or the C, the EBR7C. Uh, this one comes with a reticle called the VPR. They're both in the first focal plane. They both use MRADs. We'll talk about units of Stadia coverage, up, down, left, and right. The Vortex has 10 mils above the center aiming point. It has 10 fully marked mils going below the center aiming point in your drop area there where you would hold over. It has an 11 mil marking that you'd have to remember. It's, it's not numbered. And it does have 35 mils worth of markings going down on the heavy stadia line. On its left and right adjustments, it has eight mils marked clearly with numbers. Uh, it does have a, a spot you can memorize on the reticle 
where it would be uh, 10 mils and it still has 35 mils of markings going off in the stadia lines off to the side as well. The Arkin is marked five mils above the center aiming point. Below the aiming point, you have 12 mils marked clearly with numbers. And then at 15 mils, you have another area you can memorize that that's a 15 mil mark. Left and right, you have eight mils clearly marked and traverse adjustments from the center of the adjustment. And you also have, um, you can tell exactly what's going on out to 11 mils. You memorize the reticle. And here's a picture to show you. General commentary on the reticle features. They both have 10th mil ranging capabilities vertically and horizontally. They both have a uh, center aiming dot. The Vortex is configured differently, of course, than the Arkin reticle. It's a little more crowded in the center on the Vortex, but it does have a little more adjustment range in terms of spotting going off to the sides. The Arkin is a lot more clean of a center aiming point, but it doesn't have your wide array of markings going off to the sides, which you could use for ranging TRPs and all that. The illumination type on the Vortex is not applicable. The Vortex is not equipped with illumination of the reticle. The Arkin is equipped with illumination of the reticle, has red illumination centered around the center crosses and aiming dot. Uh, the rest of the stadiometric adjustments and holdovers are not illuminated, just the center aiming point. It has position one through six numbered off with off positions in between each number. It is not advertised to be night vision compatible, although there's more flexibility on the lower illumination end than there is on the higher illumination end in terms of how most rifle scopes are configured, which I find nice for lower light conditions for high precision shots. You don't have the flooding. This takes CR2032 batteries, which are included with the rifle right there, you can see. The reticle illumination battery life expectancy is not defined as far as I could tell, and I haven't run out yet on what I have. Both of these optics feature a three-piece control group, which means you have a screw here, a screw here for your elevation and traverse adjustments, and a counter spring here. Of course, there's more three pieces just in terms of simplifying things. They both have the standard uh, three-piece design that you're gonna see. It's not the five-piece German design that you're gonna see on the, Sh the Steiner, uh, the, the Callus, and the Schmidt and Bender stuff. The control group is a, a very different on both of these optics. The Vortex seems to have, when I take it apart, as far as I can tell, uh, the screws and the threading on the control group is brass. Uh, it's configured different in terms of the uh, style of, of tactile and audible clicks they have. The Arkin is a bit more defined. I believe this has a stainless steel uh, control group in terms of when I take that off and look at it, everything's stainless steel. Uh, this one, the Arkin in general is very robust at the expense of being a bit more heavy. The Vortex is a little lighter, but it's uh, not near as robust as this one in terms of the control group. We'll get into the performance of the, the tracking graduation precision in a minute so we can actually quantify how both of those different subtleties in the difference of the design uh, are executed and work in real life. So the turret design of the elevation turret on the Vortex is what I would call a target style turret, okay? So it has an externally adjustable turret. There's no turret caps. There's no locking mechanisms on either of these. The Arkin has a similar turret. It's a larger, uh, what I would call an extra large or oversized uh, target turret. Very easy to see and grab at the expense of being larger. This does not have turret locks where you can lock it from turning. Um, they both are equipped with the zero stop. I'll get into in a second. They're both adjustable with 1 10th MRAD clicks. 0.1 MRAD clicks. They both feature 10 full milliradians or 100 clicks per revolution. So every time you come back on zero, that's 100 clicks for both of these. The total adjustment range of elevation on the Vortex Venom is 25.6 MRADs with your traverse being centered in its range. Uh, that adjustment range will vary on this scope. If your uh, windage is dialed to one side or the other, that'll change. But in the center of its range, it's 25.6 that I counted on this test model here. The total turret adjustment elevation range of this Arkin EP5 is 33.8 MREDs as I measured it during testing. That as well has the windage turret being centered out. The elevation turret revolution markings on the Vortex are numbered every 10 clicks. So that means that you have every 10 clicks, you have a full MRAD um, of adjustment. So it's labeled zero, one, two, three, and it goes around. It also has double turn 
uh, markings, as you can see above the larger font or numbers. You have a smaller font number inside of parentheses that tell you where you're at in your second revolution. The Arkin has every 10 clicks labeled, uh, one full meter uh, from zero milliradians to one, two, three, four, full mil going all the way around to 10. And you have above those numbers, your double turn marked as well with a little bit larger font numbers. Elevation turret special markings, you're gonna see on the Vortex, we just have a very simple marking system, small font. Um, there's a small indicator here that shows you where you lined up in terms of what you're indexed on. Right now, we're on zero. We do have an arrow kind of going around the side that shows you that you are adjusting upwards. So we're going up, in which means you're dialing up on your elevation. Okay. On the Arkin, special turret markings for the elevation turret. We have the zero is enhanced, it's larger than the rest so that you can see that every time you make a full revolution. The 10 is as well, so it's a thicker font. You have a little bit extra arrows here, highlighting that that is, these, uh, the zero is coming up, very easy to see. We have a small triangle here, which shows you where to stay focused. And we have a ladder underneath when you dial up the vortex of Venom doesn't feature this. It shows you your different revolutions of your optic and the center of the adjustment range is noted by a wider line and a zero. Your first one down or up is labeled one and then below and above that is not labeled. So we have a ladder there. Come back down to zero, okay. Elevation turret cap screws. In order to get into these and slip your scales, which means you would take off this outer turret cap, uh, which you actually grab on to adjust, you usually have to undo some kind of screw so you can slip the scales to zero is what they call it. When you get the rifle sighted in, you're gonna slip the scales to zero so that the zero mark corresponds with your rifle being zeroed. On the Vortex, we have a coin adjustment, which is a standard slot, and you can see it's been used a few times. Um, I, it fits a quarter about perfectly. You have the same thing on the windage here. So you have that. On this, we have a three millimeter hex head screw adjustment for your three screws. So it's a standard target turret style setup with your three screws. You have one here. This brass screw is actually a retention screw for the zero stop. And the silver ones, you have three of them, which is to loosen up your turret cap. Your zero stop type is different on these optics. The Vortex has what they call the rev stop zero system, where you have a separate piece, which is a little sleeve that you insert when you take this off. There's the first operation is you unscrew this with a coin, this pulls off, you take off the inner turret sleeve, that comes out, you place this into the thing, you place this on the drum, to where it indexes with the pin sticking out of the uh, rev stop system. And then you replace this, indexing this to zero and making sure this is turned all the way to where it's indexing on the pin. And you have a separate part um, to set or unset your zero stop in the Vortex Venom. So you have to make sure if you're not using this, but you might wanna use it, that you have this with you. It is not on board in the scope. The Arkin has the AZS zero stop, which is a very simple and robust 3.0 millimeter hex head screw. You simply loosen up this screw in the back, which is the retaining screw that holds this one tight. Then you loosen this one up, you screw this up, you unscrew this to where the screw is not interfacing with the steel stop. You loosen up your screws here, you slip your scales to zero, you tighten back down your turret screws, and then to set the zero stop, you simply turn this screw in with your zero stop being set until it touches bottom. You don't want it to be torqued against the bottom. You just touch the bottom, maybe even back off a tiny bit, and then you go ahead and set your screw here. The same screw used for the zero stop is the same 
The same size hex head wrench, a three millimeter wrench, is what you would use to slip the scales as well. So it's all the same tool. In terms of comparing the two different designs and zero stop, this one definitely is more robust um, and a little more simple. This one requires the extra part here. That's something you would have to keep with the rifle someplace if you did not have that employed. This one also has limited amount of elevation. Once the zero stop is set on the Arkin, if you are at the bottom, if it's dialed all the way down, you set the zero stop there, you can come up until you're at the top of your elevation range there. So depending on where it's zeroed, you'll have as much elevation as you need with the zero stop engaged here. Both of these optics have a 10th mil rad target turret for your traverse or windage adjustments. They are marked from zero to five on both of these. So it starts off at zero on the back. You turn all the way to the back side and it is marked at five. And they have right and left markings denoting which direction you're turning it. Both of them adjust in the same direction on the Vortex and the Arkin. You uh, turn it counterclockwise or unscrew it to pull your shots right. If you go clockwise on your dials, you're pushing your shots to the left. Likewise, on your elevation adjustments, if you go counterclockwise, you're pulling your shots up. If you screw it clockwise, you are pushing your shots down. Special markings for the Vortex on the windage turret. As you have from the rear, you can see it's visible. It shows you that you are turning right if you're going counterclockwise. Um, it does also have a little line right there to show you where your zero is. Special markings on the Arkin are, you have a little triangle showing you where your zero is. Again, you have an enhanced zero. Um, here's the other side. You have your five mil mark there. And then you still have here as well, the special ladder markings on the underneath the cap. When you adjust left and right, you can see uh, where the center of your adjustment is at zero. And then on each side of that, you have your one turn. And then beyond that, it's not marked. So you can tell where the center of your windage markings is set on the Arkin with the special ladder markings. Again, the windage on here is adjustable with the coin slot. Again, to show you the tool that they include with it, it's a plastic deal, so it doesn't mar it up, but you can use coins. This one is adjustable with your three target turret screws, standard design, uh, three, mil three millimeter hex head screws, three of them, one, two, three. Both of these optics feature a magnification ring that is made out of aluminum. They both have kind of a fluted design. The texture and look of this one is different. Um, it's more, the flutes are countersunk into the ring. The Arkin has a little more aggressive texture to it. Um, I don't, I don't know if you'd even call that flutes. It's not knurled, but it has a different, it's a aluminum grip design that's a little more aggressive. They both are equipped with a throw lever. They're about the same length, so you're gonna have the same amount of leverage. The Vortex looks like this, marked Vortex. Has a, a very small little screw, screw to retain that. Here is the wrench for that, okay. The Arkin quick throw lever has a, a little bit larger of a screw here. It has a little texturized um, grip here, a um, little more aggressive, little a little bit beefier in terms of its design. On the Vortex, you have to turn clockwise to increase your magnification. On the Arkin, you go counterclockwise to go to 24 power. So your five, you're gonna start, you're gonna turn counterclockwise and it'll bring you up to 25 power. In terms of the magnification adjustments, both of these were a go on the extreme cold weather check. They both moved fine um, down to about 20 degrees below zero Fahrenheit, which is a good thing because a lot of optics actually do not work at all at that temperature range. The Vortex has a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit of a, a soft stop on the magnification ring on the five when you hit stop and on the 25 when you hit stop. The Arkin is a little harder on that, um, so it's more of a defined stop, mechanical stop. We're going to get into the dimensions of the scope. The Arkin, as you can see, is visibly a bit beefier and stouter. It is shorter than the Vortex. The Vortex is a little more streamlined, not quite as beefy around the control group, but is a little bit longer. The length of the Vortex Venom 5 to 25 is 15.3 inches. 
This is, the Arkin is 14 inches, 14.0. The max height from the center line of the scope, that's from the very center of the lenses, okay? Which we're gonna denote here in the center, right here, where the rings would come together in the center of the, right here. From here to here is going to be on this one, which is basically trying to quantify how much more this rifle scope is going to be sitting above that center line than a different uh, rifle scope. The vortex is 1.625 inches above the center line in height. The Arkin is 2.25 inches above the center line. So it's about a half inch taller than this one from the center line. The maximum width at its widest point of the Vortex is 3.187 inches. The optic footprint max width at its widest point for the Arkin here is 4.1 inches. It's about an inch wider overall. The footprint of the optic to the left of the center line for both of these, which is going to help you kind of get an idea of if you're carrying this rifle right-handed, okay, how much of it is hanging over on the left side that to protrude out to basically inhibit your ability to carry that weapon. Um, if you're looking for that dimension there on the vortex, left of, from center line is one and a half inches exactly. The Arkin left of center line is two inches. So about a half inch more. And I think some of that's taken up here by the illumination uh, adjustments. If you're carrying left-handed, uh, you're gonna consider the right hand center line footprint. So right of center line, the Vortex is 1.687, and the Arkin is 2.125. So again, a considerably bigger footprint on the Arkin. The Vortex is a bit more compact. If you take the entire footprint of the optic, length, height, and width, if I was going to package this in a box, um, just to give you an overall quantified example of the size of it, your maximum all three dimensions. The Vortex is 132.8 cubic inches. The Arkin is 202 cubic inches. So considerably larger overall than the Vortex Venom.